Hello everyone, my name is Tyler. I'm an application engineer with Capture 3D. Today I'd like to show you how to do a basic inspection of photogrammetry data using the free version of Gum Inspect. For those of you not familiar with our technology, that last sentence might not have made a whole lot of sense. Photogrammetry is the process of collecting the precise 3D coordinates of reference points, like these, using a digital camera. We can either measure these points directly, which is what I'm going to show you how to do in just a moment, or we can use them to increase the accuracy of scanning for larger objects. Our photogrammetry system, which we call TriTop, is extremely compact and portable. We're not limited to a fixed span like your traditional arm-type CMMs and don't need to undergo complex procedures for repositioning to measure larger objects. We simply walk around the thing we wish to measure and take pictures of it. One common use case for standalone photogrammetry is the measurement of production machining and welding fixtures. Because our photogrammetry system can be set up and torn down very quickly, it allows measuring of many fixtures while the team is on break or between shifts, meaning there's no need to build up backfill stock to keep the line running. Now that you've got some background on photogrammetry and what you might use it for, let's head on over to the software and I can show you how to do a basic inspection. All right, so we're in the software now. To begin inspection in the free version of GOM Inspect, you'll need photogrammetry data collected either using TriTop or ATOS Professional software. To focus exclusively on the inspection, I've also imported and aligned the CAD data to the reference points we've already collected. To learn more about alignments, you can check out the link in the video description. The file I have open is a photogrammetry shoot on the GOM training object. You can see the points we collected in green, the CAD in blue, and the pictures taken to collect this data. So that we can focus on the inspection a little bit easier, I'm going to hide the pictures in the short term. I'm gonna do that by going down to my bottom toolbar, selecting the image mapping button, and turning image mapping off. You can see now that all we're left with is the CAD data and the reference points we've collected. Good first step to understand how the part we're measuring compares to CAD is to do a surface comparison. In the inspection workplace, surface comparison can be accessed using the surface comparison menu here on the toolbar. We're going to do a surface comparison on actual. I'm going to default naming. For the nominal element, I'm going to select the GOM block. And you can see here we've got an exclamation point telling us that the conditions which are required for creating the element have not been fulfilled completely. We need to select an area on the mesh or point cloud. In this case, because I want to use all of the points we collected for our surface comparison, down here on my selection toolbar, I'm going to select all. We can now create our surface comparison. Surface comparison has been created and fully computed, but it's a little bit hard to see because the points are quite small. I'm going to head over to my explorer, find my surface comparison in the tree, and open the properties window. This can be opened by either clicking on the double arrow icon on the right hand side of the screen or by using the tab key on your keyboard. I'm going to go to the display section and I'm going to change the display size from small to large. We get a much better visualization of what's going on here. Surface comparison, the distance between the CAD and the points we collected is measured. If the point is above the surface of the CAD, it will trend towards yellow, and for very far above the surface, it will trend towards red. If the point is below the surface of the CAD, it will trend towards blue. Points that are very close to the surface of the CAD will show in green. You can see on the right-hand side of your display a legend which correlates the colors to the values. So in this case, a bright red is 0.285 millimeters above the surface get a little bit better understanding of what each of these points deviation to the CAD is, we can apply a deviation label. This can be done using the point wise inspection menu on the toolbar and selecting deviation labels. We are now given a dialog in the main 3D view which shows us how to create deviation labels. It tells us that by holding the control key, we can show a preview of the deviation label. Control plus the left click will create an element and we can escape out of the function by hitting the escape key or using the right mouse button. So I'm gonna apply some deviation labels now by holding the control key on my keyboard and left clicking on a few of them. So we have a couple of red ones there, a couple of blue ones, a yellow one here, and maybe a couple of green ones. There we go. 
we can see on the left hand side of this part we've got some red and orange markers on the right hand side they're green the question this may lead us to is is this an issue with my alignment is that that's to say is there a possibility that I could move the way these reference points are in relation to my CAD to bring both of these dimensions within specification? Or is my part physically too large? We can check this by measuring the width of the part. For this, I'm going to go to the Construct menu, Distance. I'm going to use the Outer Disk Caliper tool. This function really makes more sense after the dialog has been filled out. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to select my first point by following the instructions. Control, left click to select point one. In this case, I'm going to select a point on the left hand side of the part and then a point on the right hand side of the part. The last thing it's going to ask me to do is to select a direction. In this case, the distance I want to measure is along the X axis. So I'm just going to select the X axis from my drop down. We're now presented with a graphic that gives us an idea of how this function works. We create two disks, in this case with a radius of 210 millimeters, start some distance away from the part. They'll move towards the part along, in this case, the x-axis until they contact the first piece of data, in which case they'll stop. At that point, the shortest distance between these two disks will be used to measure the width of the part. The last thing we need to do before we can create our outer disk caliper is select points to be used for the measurement. Once again, in this case, because I'm measuring the entire width of the part, it makes sense to just select all of the points. Now that we've constructed the distance, we need to check its value compared to the nominal. To do this, I'm going to open the eye inspect wheel. This can be done by either clicking the magnifying glass in the main toolbar or by holding the control key and right clicking anywhere in the 3D workspace. I'm going to use the check function and I'm going to check the distance in this case. In case I know the nominal value for this part is 450 millimeters and the tolerance is 0.1 millimeters for the overall width. We can see the part is in fact too large overall width is 450.376 millimeters, so too large for the plus or minus 0.1 millimeters tolerance. You'll notice if I click off of this inspection result, though, it, it hides sort of what it's inspecting. It's just pointing to the middle of the part. This can make it a little bit difficult to show in a report exactly which distances are actually being measured. What is this 450 really referring to? To make this a little bit easier to visualize, what we can do is we can click on the actual inspection item here. So in this case, the length item, we'll see a small blue box appear in the middle. If we grab that blue box and pull it up using our left mouse button, we can drag that inspection result outside of the part. Now we've just got this dialog that contains really no useful information. So I can hide this by either clicking on its eyeball in my selected elements, or by hitting the I for invisible key on my keyboard. Now you can see that inspection result is outside of the part and you know represents more directly what's actually being measured. It also looks like a standard engineering drawing where the distances are pulled out on leader lines. I'm now going to measure the diameter of this cylinder right here on the part. To do this, I'm gonna to go to the construct menu, construct cylinder, auto cylinder nominal. I'm going to select by instructions down here, control and left click on the geometry to create the cylinder here. And now I can create and close. You'll notice though that we have a red indicator on the cylinder, a red indicator in the label, and we have a red section in our status explorer. It tells us that the measuring principle is missing and prompts us for a possible action to apply a measuring principle. The measuring principle we're going to apply in this instance is a fitting element. In this case, we're telling the software exactly how we want it to measure this nominal cylinder, what data is to be used to measure the features of this cylinder. In this case, I'm going to use the reference points we collected. I'm going to use a Gaussian best fit 
and I'm going to go with a maybe let's say three sigma. In this case, it's plus or minus three sigma. So six standard deviations for the data that we're going to use. Go ahead and hit OK. Now our red is all gone and the software knows exactly how to measure the cylinder. So we can apply a check again using our eye inspect wheel and we can check the diameter. Case because there was a nominal element constructed, it knew the nominal value of 60 millimeters for the cylinder. It measures the diameter of the reference points cloud around that cylinder and finds that it's 60.021 millimeters across. Last step we're going to do in our inspection is to create a report page. We can do this by selecting the Create Report Page icon in the top toolbar. We can give this a name. And we can edit the layout of this. So we can, for instance, focus on just the top view, have the calipers well placed, maybe the diameter call out over here. We still have all of our deviation labels visible. We can go ahead and hit OK. And then OK again to create that report page. That about does it on the software side of things. So I will see you back uh, for a conclusion in just a moment. So we've just finished a basic inspection of photogrammetry data using the free version of Dome Inspect. We performed a surface comparison using all of our photogrammetry points. We measured the overall length of the part and we measured the diameter of one of the cylinders. I would like to emphasize the word basic I used just a few moments ago. What you saw really was just the tip of the iceberg. Our software features a fully compliant gd and inspection suite the ability to measure the deformation of parts and assemblies under static load, just name a few of its many capabilities. If you'd like to learn more about static deformation analysis and the use of photogrammetry when scanning large objects, we've got some long form videos coming out soon. So make sure you get subscribed and hit the notification icon so you get to know when those videos are posted. If you've got any questions or would like to learn more about what you've seen today, you can visit our website, capture3d.com for product details and to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with our team. Thank you so much for watching everyone, we hope to see you real soon.